all right guys uh full of coming to you with another video hope that everybody is doing well but you know this was coming you know i i i kind of um led to it in my previous video and i knew it was just gonna happen you know the, these guys just really don't know when to quit you know selective boxing media sources don't really know when to quit so although Devin Haney in his last fight basically pitched the shutout you may be able to give Lenares maybe one round or two at best although he boxed beautifully although he fought toe to toe although he was aggressive still still not good enough for these guys still not good enough for media still not good enough for people in his division that say that they'll do all sorts of things to him but have yet to you know fulfill that promise okay or have yet to even shown interest in wanting to fight him mr i'm going through um mental health issues ryan garcia comes out the woodworks and says i would have slept you i'm like okay bro you had a chance to sleep him but you opted to fight javier fortuna after you fought luke campbell and the fight with luke campbell was for you to be the mandatory so now you have this energy and to be honest i don't even think he has a fight coming up i think that him saying that he'll fight uh, Roby was just cap. I don't think he's fighting him next. I really don't. I think that was just cap as well. So I'm my thing is just like, bro, you haven't even shown that you want to fight him. You haven't even shown that you're you're trying to fight him. Okay. Another thing too is that with. Tiafimo Lopez, now you have him saying, oh, he's fooled. Oh, he's he's fooled. Okay, well, if he's fooled, then why haven't you made efforts to fight him then? Okay? Now, granted, you can say that Tiafimo Lopez had the more difficult fight fighter in front of him when he fought Vasily Lomachenko, but at the same time, um, Jorge Linares dropped Lomachenko, okay? So, both of the fighters fought to unanimous decisions, right? Um, Devin Haney won 10 of the rounds. Teal Fima won eight of the rounds. Personally, I felt that Devin Haney looked more impressive than Tiafimo. He was always a step ahead of Jorge Linares in that fight. Okay? He responded well to adversity. Okay? He got buckled. What do you do when you get buckled? You clinch to recover. Right? You don't clinch the whole fight, but you, you do that to recover. You know, I mean, they... they the, these same people, though, however, are the same ones who, you know, had something to say when Floyd got rocked by um, Zab Judah, when Floyd got rocked by Shane Mosley. They, these are the same ones who were talking about uh, Floyd getting rocked. These are the same ones that are talking about Floyd when he wasn't able to knock out uh, Vladimir. Baldomir, uh, the Argentinian dude, when he wasn't able to knock out Maidana, when he wasn't able to knock out Jose Luis Castillo. But these same guys will not will not talk about his performance versus Diego Corrales. These same guys will not talk about his performance versus Arturo Gatti. These same guys will not talk about his performance versus uh, Angel Manfredi. You know, it, it's just that there's no pleasing these people. And I'm going to tell you why there's no pleasing these people. And it's just the unpopular truth. The unpopular truth is that 
they're not saying what they're saying based off of Devin Haney's performance. They're saying what they're saying based off of Devin Haney's complexion. Okay, and that's just the reality. I've seen more criticism coming from the Ryan Garcia fans, Teofimo Lopez fans who happen to be, guess what? Hispanic. Then I have seen based on um, ba based on you know black fans having any you know criticism of him. You know that's just how it works in boxing, okay? And the double standards are ridiculous. The double standards are. And I'm gonna tell you why they are ridiculous. The ridiculous thing about this whole situation is that when Ryan Garcia fought Luke Campbell, got dropped by Luke Campbell, the only thing you heard was that, oh, he, he bounced back. Oh, he, he, um, he, he was resilient. Oh, he showed the heart of a champion. Oh, this, that, and the other when he got dropped. Devin Haney didn't even get dropped. He got buzzed, okay? He got buzzed by his shot. When he went to the corner, he was still buzzed by that shot. And instead of getting dropped, he pushed through it, okay? But that's not, that's still not good enough for these uh, fans, you know? Devin Haney, for me, Personally, he did a lot of good things in that fight. Personally, me personally, I wanted to see him box more because of the simple fact that I felt he was getting hit a little bit too much. But I guess he wanted to take risks. I guess he wanted to prove a point that against a seasoned fighter, against a fighter with hand speed, against a fighter with some pop, that he can hang with them and that he can pretty much shut them out. But this is still not good enough for these fans, okay? What I'm wondering now, this is my question. This is the real question I have, is that since he has quote unquote now, look, in, now is, vulnerable as these pundits say that he's now vulnerable and whatnot and that someone even asked can he take a punch from the other lightweights at his division i wonder if anybody's gonna step up and fight him i doubt it though i doubt it i doubt if people step up and fight him a lot of people were saying the fight was boring. I didn't find the fight boring at all. I fought, I, I found the fight was a good fight, okay? But these are the same people who said uh, Floyd Mayweather is boring. These are the same people who say uh, Demetrius Andrade is boring. These are the same people who say um, that uh, Aris Landy Lardo is boring. These are the same people that say Guillermo Rigondeaux is boring. These are the same people who even say that Joran Ennis is boring. And the, the, the ironic thing I find about this is that on the flip side, these are the same people who, who say that, um, that Vasily Lomachenko is an exciting fighter. These are the same people who say that Billy Joe Saunders is an exciting, exciting fighter. These are the same people, man, that do that. That little switcheroo, you know? And it's sad. It's sad that they are not fans of boxing. It's, it's sad that they're just fans of uh, nationality, you know, or ethnic background. That's the sad thing, you know? That's the really sad thing about the whole situation. But, you know, um, I don't think Tia Fimo's gonna fight him after this Cambosis fight. I really believe that Tia Fimo's just gonna cap, you know? And the thing is about what, what makes me like, 
the thing that surprises me about Tia Fimo's fan base is that when he fought that Japanese dude and that Japanese dude was keeping him on the end of a jab, I think it was Nakatani. Yeah, that's his name, Nakatani. He just had a fight with Felix uh, Verdejo, who, man, is in the world of trouble now for what he did, you know? When, when uh, Tiafimo Lopez fought Nakatani, and he said that he's no longer fighting any more, um, he's no longer fighting any more um, tall people. Nobody called him out on his BS. You know what I mean? Nobody called him out and said, um, and said like, yo, what's your deal? You know, nobody said that it was um, cool to do that. Well, actually, what I meant is that nobody said that, hey, man, you're you're bugging. Like nobody really called him. Like nobody really checked him on that. And it's like with. With, now with the Devin Haney thing, it's just like, wow, bro, you guys are crazy. You guys don't, you guys have this energy for Devin Haney being critical of his performance, but you didn't have um, that criticism for Tia Fimo saying, oh, I'm not gonna fight um, tall guys. You didn't have that criticism for Ryan Garcia capping about wanting to fight, uh, about fighting Manny Pacquiao. You didn't have that criticism about Ryan Garcia capping about wanting to fight uh, Gervonta Tank Davis. None of that. You know, I and that's, I don't get it. Keep that same energy for, for th uh, them too. But I doubt if they are, man. I really doubt if they will. I just think they keep that energy for uh, for uh, Ryan Garcia because they just simply, or I mean Devin Haney because they just simply just have it out for Devin Haney. You know, that's that's the reason why I think they they're just gonna keep that energy for him. But it's all good, though, man. I think he's just going to keep on winning. And I don't think he's afraid of losing, either. That's what separates him from the other 135-pounders. Uh, I don't think he's afraid of losing, you know. But, I mean, it, the sad thing is, too, and I'm going to end on this note, is that... Boxing is about hitting and not getting hit. Boxing is not just about knocking people out. Of course you want to see the knockouts. Of course you want to see the stoppages. You want to see those things. But boxing is not always going to be that way. You have to play off of what your opponent gives you and also try to make things that create things but that doesn't mean that if you try to create things that those things are always going to be there but I don't think these fans understand that you know and so for me Devin Haney is the best boxer at 135 point blank period okay look at I mean granted Lenores cuts easily you know, don't get it twisted. He does get cut easily. He, he definitely does. But did you see his face after the fight? It looked like he got in a car accident. So I, I don't get where this criticism is coming from. I really don't. I can see if Devin Haney 
wasn't dominant in the fight, but he was dominant in the fight, most of the fight. It was only in that 10th round which he got hit, but he recovered from that hit. So, it is what it is, bro, man. You're never going to please these fanboys. Never. And it's just sad, man. It really is. But that's all I got for now, guys. Um, if anything, I, I believe that, in my in my personal opinion, what I believe, I believe that Devin Haney is going to fight uh, Javier Fortuna next. But then again, I think, uh, I think, I don't know who's fighting him next. I think uh, which one call is fighting him next. Um, I think it's either I think it's Jesse Vargas who's fighting him next. I believe so. You know. So he he's fighting him next. It's either Jesse or Samuel Vargas. It's some Vargas that's fighting Javier Fortuna next. So I expect him to fight him after um, he does. Granted, if he's successful, you know, Fortuna is successful in the fight. Because he's been asking for that work for a while. And I think Devin Haney will be will be happy to fight him. I don't think he's going to be trying to duck or anything like that. I don't believe he will. I don't believe he's going to duck. But anyhow, man, that's all I got for now. Y'all leave your thoughts and leave your comments on the bottom. And if you want to, like and subscribe to the page. It's always by choice, never by force. And if you want to, we can also have a panel about this whole, uh, these fanboy shenanigans. And yeah, we can go from there, man. Go Fooler signing out. Peace out, Rama.